Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Innkeeper, and today I would like to welcome you back to the lands of light. Darkness is slowly falling upon the town of Streakmore. Me, we must defend against it with the light. We're here at Harkensea. We've we've accepted a quest to defend Streakmore for three thousand crowns. I mean, the light has a price. I mean, we've got to we've got to have our boundaries. We can't do these things for free. How the hell? Would we then be able to fund the light's grace and defend against the darkness? I mean, I don't think we would be able to do so. So we're just going to follow the path. Also, before I go on with that today, we also need to rename or give a title to Killrod by the request of his creator. The, the crocodile, I believe. The crocodile. I just keep looking back and forth because I don't know how to spell things. So, so we're going to leave it at that. We have our full hearty croup of light, crusade, light crusaders right here. Keep um, mucking up what I'm saying today. It's very, it's not very early in the morning, but it's early in the morning. And I am just a bit weak all over. I've done some stretching, but it seems not to have helped. We're ready to go. We're boiled up. The only one that's different right now is Zan with his lack of helmet, and that's mostly due to the fatigue penalty that it tends to have. Although it's not huge. Not to mention the extreme lack of eyesight, <laughs> which I suppose doesn't help also. I kind of want to keep uh, keep the helmet on him though, but it is a little bit damaged, which is the main issue. However, it does have a hell of a lot more armor, but is it worth minus five to his fatigue? It's questionable. We have to remember the slash ability on his sword is only 10 fatigue used up, but then the shield wall is 20 fatigue, so you can only reuse really maybe one of those in battle before he starts to get a little bit tired, so we have to remember that. But he does have a fatigue skill, so, you know, perhaps we will be able to get a little bit more from that. But I'm going to keep the band on his head because we have to remember the Light Crusaders are orderly, all wearing red, other than, you know, us right here, because he likes to be a bit different. Kind of want to just give him this now, even though it's a downgrade. <laughs> it's not much of a downgrade. It's minus 15 to his armor, but it makes him look proper. Look how orderly we are. This is great. The only one that's different is Killrod with his bow. Although, do we have lots of long axes now? Yeah, we've got two long axes. Okay, I didn't realize that. Two long axes, two bill hooks. We have a really good backline, although we do need to continue to increase their melee skill abilities. Although, you know, basically we do both. We do one of those and then maybe one of the random ones in the back. Anyway, I'm distracting for no particular reason whatsoever. I forgot to time as well, so this is going to be interesting. I hope we can get there on time. It's not going to be... <laughs> yeah, we're halfway there. And it's like, nah, sorry, you didn't get there on time. We weren't going to allow it. Hopefully we can get there. It looks fine by right now, but I'm pretty sure that's only because our vision is in such a way. Oh, are we going to have the help of this company? Oh, you've arrived just in time. The walls of Strigma are already under the assault by under assault by the undead. Okay, and whoa. Oh, are we, are we going to have the help of two companies? This is going to be easy. Some Windergangers, a plethora of armed Windergangers. Okay. I'm going to wait until their the numbers are thinned. <laughs> All right, then. Well, this is going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure I don't actually join this fight. Yeah, I'm quite far away. This is... Wait, what? Why are the undead already next to me? This is interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to have help from the enemies. I mean, this isn't really that bad now you think about it, because it means we get to get... We're stuck into the fight, so it's not really the end of the world. We have a few enemies on our right, some of our left as well. Thankfully, the spearmen are already prepared to defend our flanks. Main issue is going to be our back line. We might want to move some people back, but we can't. I think the only thing we do the only thing we can do at the moment is use Marius to try and get a quick kill. A hit. Swapping the weapon over is something that we can do. We do have the perk for it. 84%. Nearly getting the kill. Very close. Marius doing a very good job right there. We could probably do the same thing with Nelria on the one on the side right here, or the one at the top. The one at the top looks like they've got weaker armor. They both have a distance of two. Oh, I actually told you that now. Well, what? They probably already told you before, and I just never noticed it. Anyway. 
And the target's on bad terrain. Apparently, muddy earth is bad terrain. That's interesting. Line of fire blocked. Okay, well, that's that's interesting to know. What about over here? Yeah, bad terrain. How's that not bad terrain? They're on murky water, right? And yet, for some reason, this is considered bad terrain. I don't know. Anyway, 60%. Let's go for it. Oh, wait. Were we going to go for the one up here? Kind of want to go for the one up here, actually. A miss, unfortunately. We're going to swap over to our Bilkuk. 77, a good amount of damage. Icarus, getting the kill right there. Should we move up? Or does he find the way he is? I think he's fine the way he is. I don't mind the moving up because it does mean that Marius gets to have a few extra swings. Thankfully, we have more initiative than our enemies, which is good to know. Zan, can you get a kill on the one on the top? Two 70s. One miss, one hit, not bad. Here come our friendlies. 62 versus 14. I can't believe we're getting paid for this. <laughs> like, this is very easy. Well, we'll wait and see. We might get a few unlucky dice rolls against some of these undead. They are armored. We have to remember that. And they will be rising. Who do we go for here? Oh, so you are on... Well, these two are on bad terrain. Kind of want to go for the one on the left here, to be honest. They're both equally good targets. Let's go for it. A miss. Swapping over. We're also on bad terrain. Oh, we don't have... Okay, that's annoying. Oh, well, we want our pole arms anyway. I think they will be slightly more advantageous. Though, if I recall correctly, Ragnar's abilities are not as potent in his melee skill. We'll have to have a quick look at that before I decide whether or not it's a good idea to keep that pole arm in his hands. Even though I think swapping over is probably not the best idea, Ragnar. Yeah, your melee skill is nowhere near... Well, I say nowhere near it. It's close, but it's not as good. Gab you. Probably want to go for the shiv and then the shield wall. Lombardo will probably be the same thing. And we have a bunch of our friendlies moving up, which might distract some of the undead, which isn't that bad. But there's probably going to be a long fight. I'm really glad I've got more initiative than some of these other people. Although, I guess not really, because there's a lot of blank faces who are thankfully on my side. So, let's see. Usk, probably the same thing with you. 60%. A hit. Swapping over to the Light's Banner, 82%. A miss. Okay, then. That's unfortunate. The Light's Banner, not strong enough, apparently. Let's keep going for the 80% on you. A good swing. Uh, two hits. Didn't do too much. But that's okay. Shepard, going to do the same thing. 63. Nearly getting the kill right there. Not bad. So the Undead Fatigue is pretty minimal. They can only really do one swing and move a few tiles before they pretty much start to falter. Which is the main benefit against the Undead. However, we have to remember they can revive themselves. I don't know if this is a percentage dice roll every time they go over the body of the recently deceased. Deceased? <laughs> so... We will we'll see how that works out. For now, though... We could go for a few shots on this side, or Killrod could just try and get the shot on you. 267%. I think it's pretty nice to go for. Nice, getting the kill, and then probably going, going to go for this one at the top. Yeah, unfortunately, the quick hand skill isn't as potent with Killrod because he can't shoot and go for the axe because he lacks the crossbow. We might want to think about that, but Killrod's abilities are more ranged based. But we might be able to keep them both leveled up there, I don't know. Also, pretty good range defense as well. Let's go for this one. There we are. I suppose the best thing really is just keep them low on health. They're going to be attacked from the back. And when I say low on health, I mean damage them to the point where they are very low on health enough to get a hit on them with increased chance to hit due to their weakened state. I'm pretty sure that is an effect. And that way, when you kill them, they're not going to revive themselves at full health. No damage right there on Savox, which is quite surprising because he tends to be the one that takes the most damage. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. Going to go for the jab and then the shield wall right here on Lombardo. And now it's their turn to do some fun stuff. Savox in a pretty bad position right here, being surrounded by all three of them. This is what I get for putting him in the front. <laughs> he always tends to be the one that takes the most damage. Thankfully, some of these undead are distracted. Our flanks. Taking a few hits right here. Gabu with the shield wall. Lombardo did take a little bit of damage right there. Zan, a few hits on him. Unfortunately, Neri in a little bit of a bad position. Lombardo is fleeing. Or wavering even. Which is going to have a minus 10% on all of his abilities. Hmm, okay. Icarus. Gonna go for a hit right there. 
Ragnar can't really do anything. And now it is our turn. Revives are taking place, unfortunately. And there's loads of dogs coming in, which I suppose is nice. Yeah, it's not bad. Something else to keep them busy. You'd think there were more undead. What I really should have done is just waited until they slowly died down. Would I have completed the quest if I was just nearby and they ended up getting killed? That'd be very interesting if that were to be the case. Do I want to bother killing you or do I want to help out Lombardo? Probably going to help Lombardo here. 80%. Nice. Good amount of head damage right there. Nelria is next. We're going to do the same thing with you. 82%. Huge damage. Not bad. Lombardo might be able to get the kill right there with the shield wall. Then again, you have lots of health. That's probably unlikely. Icarus. Going to have to kill the same guy again. Only two hits this time, but if they do get revived, they've got no armor left, which I suppose is fine. 51. 51 is probably what we want to go for, but I'm slightly worried about Gabu. He has a tendency of dying. <laughs> well, on my other series, anyway, I think he's died nine times. <laughs> he's quite the legend in these parts. Some would say he's the Dark Master himself. Or the Dark Lord himself. <laughs> He's the Dark Master, sure. Sounds, you know, more like some sort of epic dancer, really. He's the Dark Dancer. Is 51% better than going for these 42s? Tactically. Because even if I kill you, you're probably going to revive. And Shepard could probably deal with you himself. I think I'd rather go for the chance of damaging one of these ones. Probably the top one. Ah, miss. Oh, well. The ones at the back are going to be attacked by the soldiers right here. All of them on the road. We have to wait a long time, aren't we? <laughs> yep, they're all coming in. <sighs> Nearly there now. I mean, I suppose this is better than me moving up. That's probably not as interesting as sort of getting into the fight straight away. Also, I'm moving around the microphone right now, so it's probably distorting my voice. 70%. Let's go for two of those. A decapitation. Does that mean you won't come back? I hope it does. That'd be really cool. I mean, it makes sense. I've disconnected the head from the body. There's no reason for it to still work. Although it would be kind of cool if the head just sort of murmured about a bit. Ooh, the blue team are coming. It's a really kind of... This, this shield reminds me of Stronghold. I don't know if anyone remembers that game. Basically a castle siege simulator, essentially. Really fun. Not just Siege, though. Sort of a castle medieval life simulator sandbox game. Kind of sandbox, not really. But there was a cool sandbox mode that you could just sort of build whatever you wanted. But it was live, so it, it was not. it's not like Age of Empires or anything where you have to make the map and then start the scenario. It was all sort of... You put an enemy in and they would just spawn, essentially. It would, hard to explain for me, anyway. I can't explain things very well. Unfortunately, we have the uh, Swamp debuff, which is not ideal. We're going to go for some more strikes right there from Shepard. Going to give him some more experience, which we do need because Shepard, I do believe, is kind of behind us as well. I think he should move up here and help defend Gabu. Since he does have the greater chance to hit, he is going to have a 95% chance. A miss! You missed a 95? What the hell? Okay, well, that's such his life. 84%. Let's go for two of those. Good stuff. Hopefully they won't spawn Gabu now in confident morale. I need to remember... I need to see if that gives me any boosts. It does. 10% to everything. Wow. Okay, then. I mean, I, I think I already knew, knew this. But I've never hovered over these little sort of icons before. I just sort of assumed it increased my stats. But now I know. 291%. 2 Probably going to go for the one at the bottom, because that means Usk might be able to get the kill next turn. So we're going to go for a few jabs right there. Should have really gone for the, the shield wall now that I think about it. Yeah, I got a little bit um, aggressive there, I suppose. Sabox, still taking some of the hits. The enemy, or the, not the enemies, the friendlies. Don't you kill the dog! Ah, no! Usually why I don't go for dogs, uh, Lombardo taking a ton of damage right there. Bloody hell, Lombardo, what the hell's going on? Uh, let's see. Icarus is there. His shield is not doing a good job right now. In fact, Gabu without the shield up is doing a better job. I kind of like the idea of getting Icarus out of a fight so that I can move Zan up and save Lombardo. 
So if I go for two hits right here and hopefully get both of them a hit. Mm, I didn't get both of them, but it was definitely close. Thankfully, this one not going for Lombardo there. Oh, oh wow. Okay, Lombardo, you're in a very bad spot. So what I'm going to do is shield wall. Any of you worth tacking? I think you are. Icarus. Are you going to have the energy? I think what we do with Marius... I mean, his turn comes up next anyway, so I think he'll be fine. He doesn't have to do adrenaline. Nelria as well, I think he's fine. Okay, then. Well, Lombardo is in a very very tough spot, unfortunately. Don't spawn any over there, please. It's just those two, which is fine. I need to use Icarus to save Lombardo. I say save. Put him in a less bad position. Unfortunately, he's just not doing a good job of dodging today. Ooh, good shot. Didn't get the kill, but still a good shot. Let's go for this one at the back line right here. Might give me the Berserk perk to get that second one. <sighs> Maybe I should have done it the other way around. Nelria, though. I think it's better to go for you. There we go. And then go for you. Okay, then. So, I won't be able to do anything this turn. Which is really bad. Hmm, yeah. I should have moved Nelria. I don't think I did. I mean, what I'm thinking is take Lombardo away from both of them by just having Icarus come down here and then doing the swap. It's going to use up a lot of fatigue, but it means Lombardo is only going to get hit by one of them this turn instead of both. And I'd rather go up against this little mace, although he has got, well, they've both got double grip. I think it's a good idea to do that. There we go. I mean, never know. They might prioritize Icarus. Mostly worried about the zombie that's going to spawn. Well, hopefully doesn't spawn, but may spawn underneath Lombardo's legs. Lombardo does have the shield wall up, though, against the mace, which is meant to be good against armor, of which he doesn't have any of anyway. So it, surely it won't do much damage. And now we got to wait for all these bastards to move. They'll get there in time. It's a great and epic fight. I do believe there's probably going to be more enemies to fight. I'm really glad I don't have to do this all myself. Let's see. Uh, Ragnar. We can probably get a kill here and get the Berserk Perk going. Nah, unfortunately not. Ragnar, you're not very good with that, are you? I don't think you even have the Berserk Perk now that I think about it. They'll get there eventually. You know, just give them time. Alright, there's Zan. Are you alright to move up, Zan? I think you are. In fact, I'm kind of tempted just to... No, if I push you back, you'll come down against Lombardo. 75. Now he is coming up. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some damage on that one done. Might even move up at the same time to take some pressure off Gabu. Nah, just do damage. And I think you'll be fine there. So the zombies are going to start having their turns. Wait, I thought I swatched, swapped your armor out, Shepard. Wait, oh no. No, I, I swapped Usk's armor out. Okay, you just have similar armor. I'm probably going to swap someone else's armor at the front then for some better armor. 263. Shepard, you're not very good, are you? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, Sabox just got the kill there. I guess that zombie tried to run off. Didn't really work out for them, though. Gab you... Go for this one, and then shield wall. And Jared. I think you missed a 90%. We've missed two very, very... Well, actually, three, I believe. Very high percent chances to hit. That's very unfortunate. Yes, hitting the shield of Lombardo right there. Unfortunately, Lombardo is heavily fatigued. Hopefully, the zombie beneath him doesn't spawn. And if it does, it pushes him backwards. So that then we can kill it, and Lombardo can escape. I don't know if it pushes them. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm pretty. I think the zombies just spawn in a towel nearby. Okay then, Sabox, you can move up here and go for him. Good damage. Kill rod. You can go for him. Or that one. Yeah, go for this one. Seventy-six percent. 
You missed, buddy. Well, you're going to have to just do some damage on that one. I also just didn't hit twice there for some reason. You know, it just happens every now and again. You just don't want to hit multiple times. I kind of want to move up. Now we can move up here. Yeah, it'll be fine. Icarus can't really do anything, so we'll leave it. Nothing for you. Nothing for you. All right, here we go. Oh, no. Lombardi can go for another hit. Do I want to do that, though? Kind of want him to rest enough so that he can shield wall next turn. I'm pretty sure he would have the ability to do that. Here they come. Oh, damn it. That's the worst, worst spot to throw Lombardo in. Okay, then. Well, we have Nelria, who might be able to pull off a double kill. Or at least uh, kill one of them and do a lot of damage on that one. So it's not the end yet. Oh, wow. Good job. I kind of want Marius to move up to do some damage on this one in the back. 89. Let's do a quick check. Now, okay, Marius, you have a 70, let's say, round it up, melee skill, versus Nelria's... Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Nelria should have a greater chance to hit there. So we're going to go for the one in the back. Nice. Huge damage. Nelia might be able to pick off both of them here now. And hopefully save Lombardo. If not, well, we've had a few unlucky rolls. Perhaps we'll get more. I don't know. I feel like I've paid my dividends. Dividends, right? Let me just double check. Eh, kind of. Not in the case of money, though. <laughs> I knew it meant something like that. Okay. We'll definitely go for the more injured one, because I don't want to go for the critical strike on that. So 95%. A hit. Two dead. Good stuff. Lombardo should be able to escape now behind the back line. We need to give more of them the swap ability that Icarus has. It's just got so much ability. The ability to save your teammates is just so good. I'm going to go for this one. A miss. Actually, I don't know which one is good to go for Ragnar. It just doesn't seem to be doing a good job. Should probably just swap over from that weapon to the crossbow or something. Okay, Icarus. Nice, decapitation. We're going to move... Actually, we'll keep Zan where he is. That one's a very ang angry flag welder. Uh, welder? The flag welder, <laughs> you know how it is. You just got to weld those flags onto those pikes. We don't have any other way of doing it. I don't even know how old welding is. Were there medieval welders of some form? Would you just call them blacksmiths? And I don't mean welders as in electrical welders. <laughs> I don't mean that. So I mean the art form as in. I say the art form. Look. <laughs> Just ignore what I'm saying. Ask. Get the kill, bud. Very close. Very, very close. Kind of want to move you up, but it would put you in a bit of danger. But I mostly want to go for the double hit. If you get a chance next turn. But I tell you what. We'll wait until the enemy has had their turn to fight. So that they cannot hit you. And then we'll move you up. We could probably adrenaline and move you up at the same time. We have to remember we've got adrenaline first. And then move up. Adrenaline doesn't use up any AP. But if we move then we can't do anything with us. It's sort of interesting how it works. Feels gamey. Feels like I'm breaking the system. But I'm really not. I'm really not. Trust me. Don't want to move you anywhere, Shepard, other than here, just to protect Lombardo against any any enemies that might spawn and move at the same time. I don't think they can spawn and move unless they have higher initiative. All right, the zombie's turn. Let's see if any of them can get Gabu. Jared right here. Going to go for the 284 slash. Okay amount of damage. Actually doesn't do much damage. The undead are really just not... They don't take much damage against shields. Against shields? I mean, against swords. 
Look at how many friendlies we have. Look, they're finally here to, to defend us. Even though we were the ones that arrived late. And yet, for some reason, we're surrounded by undead. I don't know if that's just a representation of our skill set. Or, you know, we're just incredibly incompetent. Which would still be a representation of our skill set. Right, I'm going to move you over here, Lombardi. You should be fine over there unless we're standing on any zombies I don't recognize. I don't recognize these zombies. I didn't move you up, us. I was just incredibly quick there. I don't know why. But it's fine. It's not fine, really, because you never know. Could have finished the game off there. But now we'll never truly know. Kind of curious if the zombies can just eat the corpses and... <laughs> So, no, they can't spawn back now. What if they spawn reanimate inside the bodies of the dogs? Of the dags? I mean, it depends how they were feasted upon, I suppose. They're getting all the kills. Oh, wow. All the reanimation. Excuse me, kills. I'm having some burps now all of a sudden. Tends to plague me every now and again. The random burps. Don't you dare kill one of my teammates. Okay, good here. I really want that crossbow. Maybe we can kill him and and get it. <laughs> is that ethical? I don't think it is. We'll just wait for them all to move now. We'll just, yeah, let them move. You know, what's wrong with waiting a bit? Okay, now you can't do anything. M Ragnar. What have you got? 60%. We'll go for the... 50, no, we'll just go for the 60. There we are. Good kill, good kill. Need to give you more experience anyway. Ooh. Okay, I thought you were the king or something. You just had a really flat kingly helmet. Apparently not. Why would you have that helmet? Why are you significant? You're just footman. Are we following you, uh, your arc story? Have I just run into a film about the footman? Is this what's just happened now? Are you the actual saver and I'm just sort of the background mace, uh, masonry? Mercenary group. 95. Going to move up here. So you could have killed both. Well, had the potential to kill both of them. There's just one left. Jared should be able to move up and get a hit there. Maybe the dog will get the last hit. I mean, I just hope it dies before it gets another shot on Gabby. Not really because it will do a lot. Mostly because I... Don't want any undead to spawn next turn. So getting rid of it now is sort of the ideal thing to do. I thought one spawned then and just launched the guy. <laughs> it's taking a lot longer now. What the hell are you doing? Just going back and forth. Just can't control themselves. Why can't you just wait your turn? Wait, this undead hasn't had its turn yet? Okay, well, it's going to go for the dog anyway. So Jared can move up down here. Oh, it's balding. Oh, it's bald. You say it's bald or balding. It's still got hair, so I was curious. Gabby, you can't finish off the kill right there, but I feel like it's it's gonna die soon. Can I do anything from there? No, unfortunately not. We're gonna have to wait until these bastards are finished. Unless we go for the really lucky range shot, which I'm not really going to tempt. And you can just do a shield wall, Lombardo, because you never know. <laughs> you never know what could happen. A zombie could just spawn right underneath your feet. And then it all goes horribly wrong from there. Right, reanimation time. There's one. But it's just one. Okay, that's fine. So we'll keep them over there. I mean, I could have moved my mercenary... Or the, the, the company onto the left side to help out. But I was expecting more undead to spawn. What happened to all my initiative? I mean, we have been fighting, I suppose. My initiative is going to dwindle. Come on now. My neck really hurts. I feel like I'm looking at the screen in a really weird way. This really hurts. It just feels uncomfortable. Damn plane, go away. Ragnar. Good damage. Getting the kill right there. We'll be able to get this one soon if the game lets us. Is his turn coming up next? Don't want it. I don't want his turn. Oh! The footman. His turn's coming up. Don't you do it. 
Oh, dogs are gonna get the kill? No. Hi. His story unfolds. He moves into the pile of corpses. He looks around. He sees nothing but the sweat of fallen undead villagers. He weeps, realizing this is real now. This is not life at the farmstead anymore. No level ups, but some experience, and we'll take the coif. I mean, really, you should take the lot. I was going to replace the warhammer then with a, with a coif. You know, sometimes he's going to make these these trades. You enter through the gates of Streakmoor and find a few guards stra uh, standing guard with thin hands tainted atop spears. Their clothes shift about their bones like curtains astride an open window. The sense of hunger lingers thick in the air, reflected in the lip-smacking stares you're getting for just being here in good health. One of the defenders greets you warmly enough. We tried and we bit hungry, but we'll, man we'll manage. We're a bit hungry, we are. The fight is still in us. Don't you doubt that.